Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, we usually do, you know how this goes, right? So we, we, we do the weeks. Obviously, uh, we have a hell of a big one this week with uh, the Tears of the Kingdom, T-I-E-R-S of the Kingdom, says yes. Pat. Um, oh, oh, keep mocking that. You're going to look much <laughs> dumber in a few minutes. Oh, oh, were there li were there literal tears in that intro? Yes, there yeah, literally okay. are. Now, now I I'm going to need to I'm going to need to confirm this to to, to myself to see like is cuz just bec like there can be tears, but is that the intention? Is there an intended double entendre with the with the title? That's the question. Uh, if there's any kind of verticality to it that doesn't necessarily automatically I mean it to bother him about this specific question oh no so, i'll try uh, should should i should i so i've played a little bit of tears of the kingdom uh i i did in fact touch it barely uh like i'm still super in the in the early opening part is it fine if i dive into my yeah, do it do it go for it okay uh still in the super early part uh and i you know, probably like I haven't gotten to the like the third introductory shrine or whatever yet. And anyway, I cannot yet vouch for whatever Pat is talking about. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I know is that this game is so brave. This game dares to have it take an hour for you to get a shirt. And when you do get clothes, the first article of clothing you get is a skirt, immediately followed by like a minute long upskirt as it does the title drop. And I was yeah. like, game of the year. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's just so brave. Like you the, start uh, out the, with the like, sky drop, right? Yeah, yeah. He's in his regular gear, and then Link gets naked like super fast. Immediately, <laughs> they're like, "We gotta strip him immediately." And then you get the real shirt, and the the real shirt is like still like half the chest out for like yeah, the first yeah. six hours. <laughs> so is this this is the the longest uh, onboarding to gameplay free, or free play, I should say, of any Zelda so far? Oh yeah. Okay. Definitely, because what happens is is that it's you remember the great plateau from Breath of the Wild. I know you don't, Gianni, but uh, Gianni in in Breath of the Wild, you you hit on this this area called the Great Plateau, and it was incredibly similar. It was okay. you got to go to the the three or four shrines, and each shrine will give you the power. You'll use the power to solve one puzzle, and then you'll need to use that to get to the next part of the island. Then they'll give you the ability to leave the island. Blah 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 blah. This is the same, but it also includes um a intro sequence it all it, like you you start the game and right. there is a, a a narrative focused like walk okay. and talk for okay. zelda yeah. which is weird wild yeah okay I, I i didn't i didn't know she was british but i'm gonna try to enjoy the uh zelda franchise anyway so this is for <laughs> yeah uh, this is my first this yeah. is my first t time touching a zelda game ever in my life i never even played breath of the wild I was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna jump in on current thing. Uh, and, mm. and you know what? I'm glad I did because it's been it's been very nice. You said it's like the longest intro to free play uh, mm -hmm. yet. But for it on on the other side of it, the game almost feels like free play nearly immediately anyway, because even though I'm still like screwing yeah. around with the introductions to everything, uh, the game gives you a lot of dicking around you can kind of do. And so, like, I don't feel like I'm still on, like, a rail to get me mm -hmm. introduced to the game. I feel okay. like I'm just playing the game, even though I can tell I am on the guiding path to introduce me. Yeah, to I was. Yeah, um, I. I uh, talk to you, Willie. I, 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 what I recall from Breath of the Wild was basically open your eyes and then you do and you walk out the cave and then you're on a rail, but you're you're kind of able to. Yeah. Do a, you know a couple things and move around a bit, and then after like two or three uh, uh, more little interactions, you're kind of like, okay, go do go do whatever, you know. Um, right. The the so, the the wide rails guardrails is is a a decent uh, uh, feeling for like, oh, I can do stuff, but like you can't if you push it too hard, you know. Right. Right. So the the changes they made there is fairly interesting. So. Um, in Breath of the Breath of the Wild, really, after that plateau was like, fuck it, do it, whatever, go, who can't fucking go. Yeah, Dude. yeah. Um, in this one, um, the the nature of that that starting area is a sky island. It's not the plateau. Right. So it is actually, you know, a disconnected piece of land floating in the in the sky. And so it it does have like a much clearer like circle that mm. you are to travel. You're supposed to go to the top and then do the the hands of a clock around as you get the the powers. However, I was talking to a buddy of mine, uh, Christina, 
and uh, she was like asking people like, hey, um, if you skipped that first shrine and didn't get the first ability and ended up at the ass end of the map, is there a way to get back? Because I feel like I soft locked myself. And Whoa. the answer is yes, because there's enough stamina items in the environment that you can cook enough food to climb up like a <laughs> 200 foot wall and get back oh to where God. you need to go. That's hilarious. It's just not um, the intended user path. No, probably not. The intended path is is fair is very clear. It's it's a mm. clock. But what's now, more interesting than that yeah. is that they dump you into a town at the very beginning. Like they show you a town and say go here. Interesting. And when you get to that town, every single NPC starts to tell you, "Hey man, maybe you should go over here and do that good shit over here." Which they don't force you. They don't like railroad you, but they go, Hey, maybe you should go to the Northwest. There's, I hear there's cool stuff over by the bird town. And to me, this means a lot because I don't know how you played breath of the wild woolly. I did 120 shrines and scraped the entire map and then did the four legendary beasts. And that was the wrong way to play that game. Mm, I that was the, at this point. That was, because then I got to the one of the legendary beasts and they give you a double jump. And I'm like, you, I played this game oh, for 95 shit. hours yeah. without this fucking double. Oh, this sucks. Now, um, uh, now, now uh, <laughs> if it were any other Zelda game, though, you get you go to the dungeon, you get the item from the dungeon, and then you can yeah. use that a million other places. So you know that your traversal comes from those main story beats, right? Yeah. Uh, but he, so um, uh, I was talking to people about this. I haven't done any of the temples yet, but they do give you like puzzle solving abilities. But you're you're mainly working with the four that you get in that little tutorial island. And you can which, brute force any other solution if you just fucking shove that yeah, triangle out, peg outside into of those the round temples hole. That, that give you that new one. Um, or, and or more importantly, you can brute force some cosmic fucking justice on some little bastards. So it's really funny to see you like retweeting all the, the nightmare Korok abuse because you don't have the context, Gianni, of no, why I... <laughs> why people are so fucked about these little guys. Um, no, that's that's what I was really thinking the whole time was I was like, okay, here's what I gather about the Legend of Zelda. This is a universe with gods of some kind, which to yeah. me implies that these creatures deserve this suffering. It must be in some god's plan that they're being crucified and turned into a uh... shawarma span. Uh, there's got to be a reason, right? What They deserve it, right? Yeah, so the, unfortunately, Gianni, the reason is on this side of the television. Uh, <laughs> the reason is that Breath of the Wild had 900 Koroks to find. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, there um, you go, deserve and... Okay, good. And uh, every time you get one, I don't know if you've encountered one yet, they do that yeah, fucking thing that's just, just your eyes go red. And so, um, and so that's why the first footage of this game I see after release is someone pulling up and kidnapping one, locking abduction. it in a prison yeah, and driving yeah. away. Like, what is the happening? What so are these the crimes? The mechanics of that are super fun because uh, what they've done is that basically there's just a new type of Korok puzzle. And the new type of Korok puzzle is there's a Korok. He has a little backpack. Oh, he's so tired. Oh, his backpack's so heavy. Oh, and he wants to get to his friend. And his friend's over there uh, with the green smoke signal. See you in the camera points you over there. And um, the friend... Korok is a hundred feet away, maybe, but across a river or across a pit or whatever. So how will you get the little Korok guy over there? And then sometimes they're like miles away and you can like barely see the fucking smoke. And you're like, how am I going to transmit this Korok to that location? Don't know. Mm. So what they want you to do, what it's they want you to do <laughs> is they want you to use the fuse ability to stick some sticks and boards together so you can pick up the Korok and move the Korok and very 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 quickly everyone figured out you know I could just strap a rocket to just the Korok and just fire this bitch at a rough angle and then you discover that you can attach Koroks to the back of your horse and like drag them oh, and then <laughs> oh god and you, you can yeah, attach you them can to each other oh, oh Koroks, no uh, yeah it's 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 crazy you've been given you've been given like so much creative freedom on what you can like craft <laughs> in this world and uh, a perfect victim 
Uh, yeah, because their because their backpack is an attachable pull point like any stick or or beam or or plank. They're of wood. an object. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. just so this is day zero, day one. Like, where do we go from here? <laughs> by the like, are we keel haul the fucking Korok drawn and quartered Koroks? You like? Oh God! If you could I attach them to a one. horse, like. I saw one that somebody built a platform their horse could pull that had like flame emitters onto a, a cross that was just like roasting them <laughs> in like a like a like a darkest dungeon pentagram on the crucifix. You're you're right. We we are on a one way course to the Rube Goldberg machine of child sacrifice. You Dude, are a million percent correct. <laughs> more hate crimes of the kingdom. Like just <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? Oh so, man. Um, so, Wooly, you played Breath of the Wild. You had your four powers. You had Bomb, which was Bomb. You had Cryo, which was Make a Platform in Ice, which was the worst power ever. You had Stasis, which was cool because you got to do all that stupid physics shit. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, hit the ball and launch yourself into oh, the yeah. castle. The breaker. Um, mm -hmm. And I can't even remember the, uh, the Magnet, which was pick things up, right? Um, Tears of the Kingdom gives you a way better set of four abilities. You have uh, Ultra Hand which allows you to pick up and move any physics object and staple them together to create a bridge, to create a ladder, to create a car, to create whatever. Okay. Uh, you now have uh, Rewind, which will rewind any object in the world like a full minute. On its, uh, you on its have, timeline path? Uh, yeah. Whatever, okay. whatever it was doing. You have Ascend, which allows you to jump straight up into any flat surface and just pop right through it. So go to the top of a mountain from a cave, go to the top of your your boat from the bottom of the boat, just go straight up like like okay. a super jump. And then the last one is fuse where you're strapping like bombs and knives to your weapons. Um I didn't know about the rewind one yet. I, that is really funny in the context of Korok torture because oh, yeah. people are going to be going full on fucking am on these things. And, well, and I have no tears, and, but I must kingdom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what you're describing for that first power with the with the thing putting things together is, sounds like some diver down shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> like what? Oh, like, oh, Wooly. Um, when 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 rewind kicks in, it makes a world sound effect. And and when Link turns it off, he snaps his fingers. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. They know exactly but what they're doing. But here's where it gets like zany because all like in Breath of the Wild, your powers didn't really interact all that significantly. Here, every conceivable weird interaction that can occur can occur. You can like say say you have a glider that you can't you can't get off. You know you can't run and jump on it while throwing it off the side correctly, right? You just, I don't know how to do it, it's awkward. So what you do is you pick up Ultra Hand and you put the glider 10 feet in the air, as high as it'll go, and you just hold it there for five seconds. Then you drop it. Then you jump on it and rewind it, and it will go back up to its hey, original spot. Private and then elevator. you turn it off, and then you glide away. Nice. Okay? Okay, okay. But more, say that was a, I don't know, wooden board that you put up there. You can now ascend into the now frozen in air wooden board and jump 30 feet straight up and use that to platform. Or okay. the one that I saw earlier today, right before starting, what if you made a giant cock and balls out of boulders and logs? Of course. Okay? Yes, And naturally. what you did is you pick it up and then you start to spin it, because you rotate it as fast as you can with the ultra hand. Right, and then you drop it. Then you hit a Hinox with an arrow. Those big, gigantic goblin guys. Then you rewind the cock and balls. The cock and balls will now start whipping him in the face and mm -hmm. and hurting him mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. killing him. As you ride spinners, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. This makes Seriously, sense. I mean, the mushroom slap. I, I mean, really, like if you know they if they're doing their jobs, they're paying attention to all the crazy ass tweets and videos that Breath of the Wild had, and then going, "We need to enable more of that. It's the best ad you can have for these games." You know, is the the absolute physics nonsense that they they get into. Um, yeah, like the and the Koroks are the Koroks are ex the reason why they're getting it so hard is the Koroks are the explicit seed mm. of patient. 
So I had a Korok by a river, had to get across the river. You can't ultra hand while you're going across the river, right? There's a couple solutions. You could take a board and raft them across. You could build a catapult, which I've seen people do, and drop a big old rock and just launch that fuck like a trebuchet. I decided to skip every step and just to strap a rocket directly to the Korok and vaguely point him in the direction and hope he lands where I hope he does. And sure enough, he did. But then you go, wait, I can just strap rockets to these little shits directly? I don't have to... Now, now for clarification, though, the Koroks are not as annoying in this game. It's specifically because of previous trauma. They are, they are much <laughs> I mean, less annoying in this game. I, I'd okay. like to believe it's, it's because they're a victim that is available. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it, yeah. they're, you pay they're it forward. there. It's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. But, like, if one could... Uh, um, if one could take the feathers from Assassin's Creed 2 that you had to yeah. collect and strap them to a chair, cut out the bottom of the chair, and spin some rope and knock that feather in the balls. Like, yeah. people would be super down for that, right? Uh, what so if, it sounds what if you could put a Riddler trophy on a torture rack? Yeah. It, yeah. You know, that's it. That's it, right? So it feels like, okay, so the personification of the thing that I hated can now be abused in the sequel game where they're not anywhere near as annoying. Well, time to just meet out some, some and you know pay forward justice yeah the real thumbs up <laughs> is that on all these puzzles that you have to um combine you know get the korok to his friend they give you two seeds instead of one uh, so okay. finding them under a rock or climbing a tree and shooting the targets or whatever oh uh, that'll give you your one seed and you'll be like yeah ha ha hmm. but actually going through the trouble to physics them up to something will reward you with two so, um, Gianni, you mentioned that the uh, we open up to a giant link upskirt and uh, yes. and 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 you know some some nudity there. Um, is it possible that this is just setting the tone because we all know what's coming, right? We all know that Ganon with his chest bare is descending oh. from on high soon, right? Yeah, Rehydrated yeah, to give everyone else a th uh, you know to get everyone else's thirst quenched. So if you're going to set that up on one side, right? The, right. the Triforce of Thirst, the Triforce of fucking... Like, like you, you got to get you gotta get all of it, all the players in place, you know? I feel like that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no. The, the Dry Ganon opening definitely makes... It's starting to add up. There's, there's a, they're, cre they're painting the perfect climax, one might say, yeah. The Triforce of Barra, the Triforce of Twink. <laughs> I mean, who knows, dude? Who knows where we're going? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, so, I know, I just want to see, like, whatever outfits you get for your Link, um, like, you want to know that the green tunic is in it, but then you want to, there somewhere, but then you want to completely go wild with it and mix it up and do other things, right? Yeah. Just, just, I just want to know it's there and then make a barbarian Link going in, so. so. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned, like, who knows where this is going, and that leads into, like, one of my most interesting experiences oh. with the game. Yeah, so, right. um, in the in Breath of the Wild, they gave you those like nondescript photos, and they said, "Hey, man, if you find this spot, you'll find a memory of what happened to Link." And but they were pretty hard to find to get all of them, right? In this game, they go, "Hey, there's a big fucking gigantic draw, like you know, a crop circle drawing of a thing on the Earth that you can see from space. Go there, you'll get your cutscene." Right? Mm. So I go, okay, I'll go do that. I'll go get my cutscene. And I got the last cutscene in the game the first time <laughs> yeah. I sat down. Oh. And so you're sitting there going like, hey, where's this going? And I'm sitting there going like, oh, this is this. So this is where it goes. Oh. This, this is uh, <laughs> okay. And it's so wild because not only does it show me like, here's what's going on with Zelda and whoa, whoa, Tears of the King, right? It has a part where Zelda flashes back to all the other cutscenes I didn't see. Oh, in the fight. So I'm like, okay, well, I definitely got the gist of it now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I, I think it's, it was similar. Hmm. I heard in Breath of the Wild you could you could go and fight the final boss like immediately. Too, yeah, right? absolutely. You can yeah, bum yeah. rush Ganon super hard and just fucking yeah. annihilate that that your playthrough. Um, Beautiful. Good. good here's good. the thing, right? So. That's kind of nuts that that happened. Uh, but Pat, like, would it be like, is that is that freedom not 
kind of part of oh, what awesome. you're signing up for, right? Oh, the, totally. the fact and that you is, just wandered into that shit. There is yeah. going to be, this is my gut, but I assume there's going to be a you unlocked them all follow up to that to that scene because it didn't actually answer any questions okay. that I had. Um it does something interesting. So in in Breath of the Wild it was fucking destroy Ganon and the camera actually points you to Hyrule Castle and like there's very much a pointing at WrestleMania fucking go do it. Mm -hmm. And then you mm -hmm. try it and you're a pussy so you can't so you go get stronger. Here that is not the the nature of uh the game's core um uh task the game's core task is find zelda and i don't know where the fuck zelda is okay zelda yeah. is not a gigantic beaming icon on the distance that says fight me here because <laughs> there's there's you know they obviously took every one of these like random things you can stumble into put them down on a board and go okay what is the most fucked up version of events you could have displayed yeah. to you to learn things until you get to the the, the final one and mm. i'm sure that it's all accounted for right i'm sure that like you're like as weird as that is tonally there's yeah like you said there's probably going to be context to make oh, it absolutely. all feel you know decent by the end um but that's yeah no the that's the cost of freedom man that's what it is mm -hmm. you know <laughs> so like the the one of the reasons that in Breath of the Wild I did all the shrines and did uh, the the beasts last was because the the game story said go fight Ganon right now unless you're weak then do the do the do the you know the the divine beasts and blah 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 so I'm like oh okay so I assume Ganon's gonna be really hard so I did all the shrines to get all the life upgrades right and then I oh I'll, oh what well, I'll go do the beasts blah 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 here they're like yeah I don't know where Zelda is go find her I guess maybe uh the people next to these dungeons will help you find her mm -hmm. and so it's it's a lot more like it seems they are aware that a lot of people left the dungeons and the temples to last and now there's a lot more elbow in your ribs of like man you should you should go down to the the Death Mountain and and do the fucking Goron Temple, man. You should you should get down there. How much of this feels like, um, you know, following up on my question from last week, Breath of the Wild two versus like, um, a new Zelda game where you're doing things that are not like uh, a Majora's Mask versus like expansion pack. Oh to, no, this to, is Breath to... of the Wild two. This is this is Breath of the Wild two all all okay. day every day. So moment to moment, like overall, you're you're feeling more or less like a continuation of the journey with new powers. Yeah. So um, here's a really good example um, uh, that I have to preface something. So the reason why I'm like laughing about Tears of the Kingdom is because I was like, yeah, there's tears because there's the surface world and then there's the sky world, right? Um, there's also the depths. Um, there's big fuck gross holes in the ground that you can fall maybe two or three kilometers down, much like Siofa River in mm. uh, Elden Ring. Okay. And there is an entire second world map under there. Okay, uh, Elden Ring in it. Let's go. No, no. <laughs> Remember when we were playing Elden Ring and we were like, it's disappointing that the underground is only these four or five areas. It's not the whole map. This is the whole map again. <laughs> underground okay now it's not as detailed there's not settlements and 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 whatever but like it's you Dark go world, down there but we just dropped it and it's a whole fucking thing and the best part it's dark and i by dark i mean it i mean it's pitch and you have to self-light oh. the whole way it is dark world just physically like yeah like dropped yeah okay um so that's cool. Um, but you remember the cube? The cube mazes? Uh, God, like in the northwest so of the map, there's a, a maze that's just a gigantic... Like, yes, 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 the humongous cube. cube. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, the cube is there. It's still there, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's Breath of the Wild. And it's like, redo the cube. And the cube has now been iced up in such a way so that the layout is different. Oh, okay. So I redid the cube. I, I used the trick that I did the first time where I climbed to the top of the cube and ignored the whole maze, right? Okay. And then I realized that didn't work because now the cube is so messed up that I have to actually do the maze properly. Like, okay, cool. You learned it. So I defeated the cube. Defeating the cube doesn't do anything. 
All it says is now that you have defeated the cube maze, you can now go to the cube maze in the sky. And the cube maze in the sky is like four or five miles up. So I had to transfer to a different sky island and spend like 40 minutes building the shittiest flying machine known to man and strap it with a bunch of batteries and use my consumables to fly over there. Upon defeating the sky cube, I unlocked the cube of the depths. Uh -huh. okay. So I then had to dive deep underground mm -hmm. and fight a gigantic super boss, which finally, finally gave me an item. <laughs> this is this is bullshit. When Super Mario Sunshine gave you a cube maze in the sky, everybody bitched. But when Zelda does it, oh, it's game <laughs> of the year, man. So they they they. But in the process, I assume in between these cubes, you are finding your way over to a whole new land and interacting with all the different things there and new enemies or whatever else is happening, and then getting your your equipment to go to the next cube also the main the main thing that they've done so it is the same map as breath of the wild it is the same geography however the 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 ganon juice i don't know uh the gloom the miasma has, the miasma they call it gloom has uh significantly altered the geography of the map so this area used to be warm now it's cold this area okay. used to be safe it's now destroyed with ruins or what have you, and there's new enemies. You are uh... so brave. It introduces a musk mechanic unapologetically. Sorry, go on. <laughs> are you uh, you doing shrines? There's shrines yeah, going I'm on. Doing shrines. Yeah. Okay. Are shrines um pretty much the same? Shrines are pretty much the same. There's now 153 instead of 120. The extra 33 are in the sky. Uh, okay. and, um, all the old shrines are gone, replaced with the new shrines, and mm. the new shrines have mm -hmm. a double purpose. So they're not just fast travel points and upgrade spots. Um, in the depths, the shrines, fo the bottom of the shrine comes down and becomes a light route, and when you turn them on, it lights the area around the shrine, and oh, eventually that's nice. you can make the entire underground properly lit utility what's okay. more interesting than that is that if you're in the underground and you find a light route but it doesn't correspond to a shrine that means there is a shrine directly above your head on the normal map okay now they, they're always one to one a hundred and yeah it's like 153 so, okay that started to feel like busy work as we as we know in the last game mm -hmm. um do you get the the feeling that we're gonna hit that again this time around? Where you're like, okay, no. let's go fucking spend a couple hours banging these out. Uh, no, uh, for two reasons. One is uh, the addition of having the shrines be the light route for navigation of the underground is really nice. Uh, and the second thing is that man, you need the health way more this time around. Um. I, it was uh, stream four before I got to the point where anything larger than a moblin wasn't insta killing me with a single strike. Huh? Is that like, because of the path you chose, or is it? No, it's because shit is violent. Okay. Like it, it is a significant step up in in damage and difficulty and danger. It it also, I guess, narratively makes sense too, right? Because in the very beginning, like the first thing as you're showing the intro of the game is basically you get bitch slapped so hard that you lose all your hearts and stuff. So it kind of like he gets like classic. This he, he gets unwell in in the beginning. Uh, he 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 yeah, you can say that. Rash. Uh, and so I, I guess it kind of makes sense where it's like, oh yeah, you've got to go you, like build that back up in in that classic way. Yeah, no, the Samus tripping on a rock and dropping all her missiles. You well, know, it's, the... it's it's really funny because, you know, everyone complained about the durability, right? It, particularly the Master Sword. Master Sword. How come the Master Sword isn't that durable? How It's the fucking Master Sword. It's just, opening 10 minutes of the game, the Master Sword is, like, annihilated down to the hilt. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, wow. Okay. You have How that nice moment. How about this stick I found? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
It's really funny. Okay. Uh, oh, you guys don't like durability? Fuck your master sword! Just like shatters it instantly, yeah. And and you still you still use it a little bit despite it. Being yeah, and totally then it breaks destroyed. again, which is like, oh come on. <laughs> yeah. Have there been any um, uh, 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 like changes to basic combat? Uh, maybe since like the updates of last time. Uh, flurry still works the same. Uh, throwing things works the same. The main big difference is um the fuse mechanic lets you do all sorts of stupid zany shit. So uh, I have let's say a halberd, right? And there is a, uh, you know, those red barrels. Mm -hmm. You fuse the the halberd and the red barrel together. Suddenly you have a, a explosive harpoon. Right. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Gotcha. Um, monsters all have horns on their heads that you that will pop off uh, that you can fuse to all of your gear to make it more durable uh, and have various nice. effects. Um, bombs are rare now. I think they're very rare. Because you have to um, make bombs out of other things in the world. Usually, usually use uh, bomb flowers, but they're they're very they're very few and far between. You never usually end up having like four or five or six on you at any given time. Uh, the most interesting thing is just the fuse mechanic of being able to add properties onto whatever your weapon is causes all sorts of zany shit. So in the in Breath of the Wild, when you wanted to break rocks or you wanted to break open like some rocks that either some ore or like a, a passage hope you had a hammer on you because otherwise you can't do it here you just go now nah, i'll take any random ass stick and combine it with boulder now i have a hammer and i can okay. now just pop through the wall i um i i put a boulder on my shield and then the parry will like smash rocks apart oh, oh nice cool. interesting um, huh. Are early you... on you find a mine with mine carts everywhere, mm -hmm. if you fuse the mine cart to your shield and then do a shield hop, you can now skateboard on your mine cart. <laughs> nice, nice. That's okay. Um, I was. You can do bomb jumping. You can do uh, a springboard Fusions. jumping off of that. Do you choose where the thing fuses to it? Do you position it, or is no, it kind of like it, a set? It's, it's uh, for the weapon. It always goes on the end of the weapon, and okay. for the shield, it always goes right up on top of the on shield. Top. Okay. Uh, for arrows, it's the most interesting because, like, now you hit arrow, you hold down arrow to shoot, and you just hit up on the D pad to get your items. And every single consumable in your inventory just goes in a line. It's like, do you want to throw an eyeball on it to make a homing arrow? Do you want to make it a fire arrow? Do you want to make it a bomb yeah. arrow? Do you want to make it a dazzle okay. arrow? Do you want okay. to make it a light arrow? Do you want to make fuck yeah, and so yeah, on yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, fucking yeah. so forth? Instead of you just do, having them in the preset types. Or, yeah. yeah. You do control position for, like, uh, objects in the world that you fuse, which is how you get a lot of the uh, Korok torture racks, because that's it's crazy how much freedom they give you with it. Where, like, you can rotate shit and spin it around and, like, get it at really any angle you want. Mm -hmm. uh, things, like, attach only at, like, certain points, for the most part, I think, from what mm -hmm. I've seen. Yeah, but it you to be whatever have... their internal vertice is. Yeah, but you still have, like, a lot of selection in how you spin the item around, and there's still a lot of different points where you can attach stuff, usually. So there's just a lot of creativity. There's okay. it's, it's been crazy. I have there's a buddy so who says much... the game is just Blender to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, right. You're just in a you're in a in a, a physics toy box. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, there's a lot of different ways you can solve any particular problem, and there's also the dumb way. So I got to some goddamn tower I didn't know how to climb, and I could tell they wanted me to make some kind of contraption. Instead, I just made a laughably, obnoxiously large bridge that I just tilted against the side of the fucking thing and just <laughs> nice. just climbed up that way. It works. It a fucking proud works. Sam Porter bridges fades in in the sky. <laughs> as crossing it. It's it's very much like it's a game based on like yeah no that's a win's a win. <laughs> and you had <laughs> enough magic. Win. You had enough magic to like keep it there for the entire duration of that. Oh no, that shit's forever. Oh, it's and not any, like time anything, and then it breaks apart. Okay. Anything you fuse together, like a mm. raft or a boat or a fucking bridge, that is until the next blood moon where the game flushes its memory. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Huh. Um, are you so then I guess I'm wondering like are you gonna uh or when you're get most fights when you're getting into uh, uh you know, running across like a mob blind group or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can just run in and sword and just board it, oh, right? Oh, totally. You but, just wail on them. But, like, are you, like, fucking around with the interactions and... and yeah, and... because um, they they make the... They make uh, the... Um, 
they make the interaction they, they give you a lot more reasons to do it so uh last night i had two interactions that sum it up really well i ran into an armored moblin but my weapons didn't do shit until i pulled out a hammer item so that i could knock the armor off now if i didn't have a hammer item on me at the time i could have picked up a stick and a nearby barrel or boulder and that would have knocked it off him as well something yeah uh later on i got i fought like a camp of moblins that they threw a a gigantic uh spiked ball at me which i then just fused to my long sword and the properties of the balls knockdown retained on the weapon so i was like knocking down like a hinox like okay. after two strikes uh because i I'm later thinking, was, yeah spoke to people and they're like you could have just rewound the ball and then the ball would have anti-crushed cool. them cool 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 okay because <laughs> i found in breath of the wild uh that like i would start fucking around with the like physics and stuff in fights when i got like bored or just kind of felt like it but it was yeah. just kind of a, like a, eh, let's have fun with this fight now but for the most part, you, you know, just otherwise can go about it straight. And there wasn't like a ton, a ton, a ton of um, pushing for you to, to think outside the box for yeah, know, a ton so, of encounters. Um, right now, there's like, uh, you know, the Talos, the big golem guys. Um, a lot of them have like wooden platforms on them. So the guys can, uh, moblins can hang out on top of them and shoot you with arrows while you're trying to fight the Talos. Um, and, uh, there's a lot of things that you can do, uh, when they throw rocks at you, you can rewind the rocks back into them and then they get staggered a little bit. And then you run in underneath their platforms and you use ascend to teleport to the top of the monster and then beat on all the guys on top. It, like there's, there's a lot. Nice. And I'm not even getting into the stupid mechanical monstrosities that I see people making. I saw somebody make a big wheel earlier today which was a, a gigantic Ferris wheel monstrosity that like could go through deep water. Uh, I saw somebody build a uh, fucking mecha a yeah, few days ago. This, well, this is, that's in the trailer. There's a mecha th moment. I saw. No, 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 no. No, the mecha that you're thinking of is a block of stone with an arm on it. I'm talking um, uh, bipedal, 16 foot tall robot with bombs and lasers that can be piloted and walks like a man. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Interesting. Wow. Or you could just make a big old penis and turn the flame emitter on it and then just go... Pshh. That's fucking crazy. Okay. All right. Yeah, it sure is. Um, great. Great. That, that, now, now I'm, I'm, what you're describing is the, like, Okay, what's the what's the Majora's Mask aspect aspect of this, right? What's the super different thing? It's like, yeah, the ability to basically engineer shit uh, 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 from what you're describing. This, like, I, I was expecting, you know, Fortnite, build a tower, gentrify, no, Hyrule. No, it is you know. it is like herbal space program. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck. Okay, it's made right. this fascinating experience going into shrines because you go into a shrine and you're on stream, and so the back seating begins. <laughs> um and you start putting together the pieces and the back seating stops and is replaced with what are you do what are you yeah. doing <laughs> what is yeah. what is the plan with this and then like i made a really really jank air balloon to solve one of the shrine puzzles and it worked it technically worked i did defeat the shrine that's great. It's the, the game. It sounds like it's dedicated to that uh, bizarrely satisfying yet shameful feeling of any time like you're trying to fix anything and there's a guy over your shoulder going, uh, uh, yeah, I guess you could do it like that. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Uh, and, really, I've and that's a tweet that has a robot. And I'm immediately like realizing as well that like this is pos this is the worst game for backseating ever because like if I'm doing that that's if that's how I if that's how I'm trying to have fun in this game the last thing you want is a ton of people going no do it the way I did it right like <laughs> if you can if you can brute force some shit and the system actually allows it um, then you should be allowed to cook you know the, the system <laughs> allows for a wide variety of brute force details uh earlier today i discovered that uh by looking at clips on twitter that the angular momentum of 
items affected by rewind that aren't being rewound themselves maintains. So if you put items underneath a plank of wood and then rewind the item underneath it'll rise and the plank of wood will also rise but it'll keep its angle so you can use that to create platforms out of nothing <laughs> jesus christ okay and as Bullshit, you're describing man. that i'm looking at this like fucking mecca is this game even zelda at this point seriously wow yeah uh, I I, I don't I don't know about any of this, man. I'm a boomer shooter guy. You just shoot it harder. That's that's all I got. That's that's the full extent of my. Well, this is this is shoot it harder, but first you have to to build your own gun. One of the most unhinged things that I've ever seen in my chat came from friend of the show Gene Park, which was um, the master sword in Tears of the Kingdom is a metaphor for the Sh Shinzo Abe assassination. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? You gotta build the gun yourself if you want to get it done, man. And then it Ganon, breaks. Ganon getting murdered by a goddamn gizmo, a motherfucking thingamabob. Unbelievable. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. All right. That's... <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Okay. There I, is some I... tongue, tongue in cheek on this, though, like, uh, that you actually talk to an NPC, like, hey, why are all the weapons garbage? And you're like, it's crazy. When the gloom came out, every weapon in the world became horribly degraded and will break in just a few hits. Durability. So you're going to have to fuse items to your weapons so that they stay durable. I'm like, okay, I get it. Thank you. Thank you. I understand. Have you been rewarded with, like, high durability like yes uh, uh thing okay things so, uh, like, in, you in can the earn depth, the ability to not have to deal with that go down into the bowels of the earth you will find pristine weapons nice okay cool 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 um yeah i'm hearing i'm hearing a lot of uh like yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Death Stranding like you know, like solving of problems. Um, oh, absolutely. And just leaning into leaning into uh, 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 the the weird ass physics and jank of it. Uh, dope. Uh, I guess my only other thing is like, have you ha f had any like one on one boss fight or one on one Lionel kind of encounters that are just like the thing that I love the most about those games? Oh, Lionels are there for sure. I have not encountered one. I saw now there is a enemy that supersedes the Lionel. Um, it is called a Gleok. And I saw one from far away. It is a Ghidorah. Okay. A, it is a King Ghidorah. Yeah. It is a massive three headed dragon. Okay. Um, also, and this normally I would talk about this. There is a new enemy that replaces the uh, Guardians that has given me the strongest feeling of I don't want any of that get me out of here I have ever had in a game since Dark Souls 1 Tomb of the Giants. Wow. It, it shows up and you go, I don't want, I don't want none of that. Wow. I am out of here. Goodbye. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Unpleasant. All right. This is a, a good. It's a good game. Good. Uh, good Zelda. Not playing this shit. The only thing I want to say is like I can't believe it can run on the Switch at all. Like <laughs> oh, it's man. keeping it's keeping a running tally of like every <laughs> physics interaction in the world for like hours, because rewind works on anything. I don't. It's it's. And it runs a lot better than Breath of the Wild, also, which is also surprising. It's doing a lot more, but it, it runs steady. Well, right up until you combine 45 items together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it then it runs a little less steady. Fair. I I it's nice that, you know, however many years after launch you get the like we figured out the dev kit system, we figured out how to smooth over uh, a lot of the 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 launch struggles with with development and, and improved performance but it is just kind of a bummer that it's like well yeah but it's nintendo so you ain't hitting 60 anytime soon they're just oh hell no it. but you are hitting like a mostly locked 30. Yeah. yeah which is better is a lot better than breath of the wild was 
Yeah, they'll Cacarico get around to Village it. Village chugs apparently. They'll get around to it next gen. Oh, um, well. yeah, yeah. The villages definitely seem like uh like bigger, much larger like population uh, groups than like the little you know mm-hmm. outcropping uh, towns you kind of got in, in in Breath of the Wild. But uh, okay, it's Nintendo but yeah, performance. Uh, Zelda's big. Cool. It's it's um. A, a, I've been trying to get to one village for f- four days, and I can't figure out. Every time I, every time I'm about to get there, I go, "Oh, oh, shiny!" and just wander away. Okay. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna this. Is, I'm gonna play it for like three months and beat like three percent of it, and be like, "Wow, that was a great Zelda." Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say like i hope you've got time like set aside yeah, if you're going you know like <laughs> it's just these are yeah it's a commitment it's a commitment yeah okay uh i gotta use the bathroom so okay quick break uh and then we'll brb
All right. So, uh, Zelda, that uh, was what was up. Um, I want to let Zelda talk. <laughs> because she said, open your eyes, and then... Uh, I don't know how to work. Is it because of the British? It's because of the British. That's why. No. It's, it's, um, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down for this fucking new awesome world of voice acted Zelda and cutscenes and story and all that shit. Like, it's been one of those things that I've, you know, like, it, it, it's, yes, for years it's always been kind of just the voice in your head and it's a, a Zelda staple in a way. But, you know, like every other franchise at some point, it's like we can, we've gotten like orchestral amazing music. We've gotten Link kind of going for years, you know, but um, I don't know that Link will ever have lines. It's just more of a... He definitely doesn't this time around. Like Ganon and Zelda are like talking to each other and Link's just going, ah! <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like, that's a, Jesus, that's a, dude, calm your shit. That's, that's, their, that's for player insert reasons, you know? But um, no, I, I, I'm, I'm super down for like... Zelda to join the ranks of every other franchise that has been like, okay, we can we can have this be complete with yeah, full score, full so voice acting everything. She, just get, she get wasn't voiced in, in Breath of the Wild, is that right? She was. She was. Okay. There just wasn't a ton of lines uh, in, gotcha. in for like She, she sounds good. I, I she, she, she sounds great. I, I was thinking about, oh, Zelda has a voice. And then before I could fully process that, I was hit with the whiplash of her pulling out a Nintendo Switch uh, oh and, yeah, and, and the little... there's just a Nintendo yeah. Switch in that world. Uh, but yeah, she's mm -hmm. good. Well, yeah. yeah well, they... act. Oh, here's the dumbest part, man. That's not a Nintendo Switch. That's a Wii U gamepad. Right. That's what right, I was right. thinking. Is they were like, here, use your pad to to look at the world. And I was like, this feels like a Wii U feature. Mm -hmm. What? Ha what? Why is it here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most of the most of the the time, the voice acting would usually. I mean, there would be voice actors all the way back to like Ocarina. You know what I mean? You got Ganon going, rah, 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 rah. but you just do a couple barks and then that's mm. it. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, or get Jack Black to voice him. Whatever. Yeah. So I'm uh, I'm 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 down for this. 